Hello everyone. Today we'll discuss about the developmental anomalies of orderon parallel structures. So the objective of today's discussion is to brief you the various terminologies which we'll be covering under the following topic, and also to introduce the developmental anomalies of teeth. So starting with the introduction, when we talk about developmental anomaly, so it is any kind of malformation or defect or anomaly which results. from the disturbances which takes place during the growth and development of that structure so these defects may may be manifested either at birth or they may appear sometime later after the birth so before we deal or we enter into the developmental anomalies of the various oral structures let us get familiar with various terminologies which we'll be discussing in between so the very first term which will come into play is congenital so anything which exist before birth or at birth will be considered to be congenital and these congenital malformations will be anatomical and the structural abnormalities they may appear at birth or they may not may be diagnosed later that doesn't mean they do not appear at birth they were there but they were not diagnosed the second term which we'll be using is hereditary hereditary is the term when the disease is transmitted from the ancestors or the parents to the child so that condition is hereditary condition the other term is genetic in which the transmission of the disease is from one generation to the another that is from the parent to the offspring directly through the genes then in the another category we'll be having the transmission through the autosomal chromosome or the sex linked chromosome so those traits which are transmitted by the autosomal chromosome which are 22 pairs in number will be autosomal transmitted disease whereas those which are transmitted by the sex chromosomes will be sex linked diseases under this category we have further subdivisions as dominant and the recessive gene the dominant gene is one which will produce its effect either if it is present in the heterozygous form or in the homozygous form that means one allele may be affected or both the alleles may be affected whereas it will be considered to be recessive when homozygous condition is there that means the both the alleles are affected so starting with the types of anomaly we'll be discussing in about them one by one first is the congenital anomaly second is the hereditary familial acquired hematomatous idiopathic talking about the congenital developmental anomaly it is the defect which is present at birth or before birth it is because of the disturbance during the intrauterine life which could be either hereditary or environmental such as cleft lip and palate The second condition is hereditary developmental anomalies, which are genetically transmitted from the parents to the offspring, and the genetic location is identified, such as Down syndrome. The next category is familial developmental anomaly, in which the defects are transmitted directly from the parent to the offspring, and the genetic location is not identified. So, in the hereditary, the genetic location is identified, whereas in familial developmental anomaly, it is not identified. For example, diabetes, which runs in family. The next category is acquired developmental anomaly in which the defects develop during the intrauterine life because of some pathological condition which could be any trauma or it could be any infection during the intrauterine life so these anomalies can be prenatal neonatal or postnatal the these which fall under this category are such as congenital syphilis fluorosis the next type of anomaly is hematomatous anomaly in which the defect is occurring because of the hematomatous proliferation this hematoma is a new non neoplastic proliferation of the tissue but it resembles to that of its parent tissue so whenever we talk about hematoma it is a non neoplastic excessive proliferation of the normal tissue that means it is not neoplastic and it is native to that location for example odontoma which is an hematomatous proliferation of the tooth forming apparatus other term is choriostoma in which there is proliferation of the tissue but it is not needed to that location that will fall under the category of choriostoma whereas hematoma was native to that particular location the next term that we'll be discussing is teratoma teratoma is tumor which arises from all the three germ layers okay that is mesoderm endoderm and ectoderm for example ovarian teratomas some diseases may be idiopathic in which the exact cause is not known so they will fall under the category of idiopathic developmental anomalies also in this 
discussion, we'll be covering a topic syndrome because various anomalies are associated with some syndromic lesions. So what is a syndrome? Syndrome is derived from the Greek word syn plus drome, which means run together. So syndrome is characterized by a group of symptoms which creates psychological disorder and abnormal conditions. So there are multiple presentations which characterize a single disease will be considered to be a syndrome. So there are n number of syndrome which are found to be associated with many oral diseases. So early diagnosis of syndrome is important so that the severity of disease can be prevented. For example, the Gardner syndrome. Gardner syndrome is associated with the early manifestation in the oral cavity in the form of multiple impacted and supernumerated cleft lip and cleft palate, multiple epidermoid cysts, multiple osteomas of the bone, and multiple polyposies of the large intestine. So this Gardner syndrome shows its early manifestation in the form of impact and supernumerated. So it is very important for a dentist to find out this early manifestation in the oral cavity and to rule out this syndrome. Also, anomalies of tooth can occur either due to genetic or the environmental factor. So, defect may occur at any stage of the development of teeth, which are manifested clinically in the later life. So, it is the utmost important duty of a dentist to discover those anomalies in the early stages. So, starting with the classification of developmental anomalies, according to the site, they can be anomalies of jaw, anomalies of palate, anomalies of lips, anomaly of gingiva, tongue, salivary gland, line of fusion, teeth. So today we'll be discussing only the developmental anomalies of teeth. So the developmental anomaly can arrest at any site stage of tooth development. For example, if it is at the time of initiation, it will lead to anodontia, that is partial loss of teeth or hyperdontia, increase in number of teeth. If it takes place at the time of proliferation, it will affect the size of the tooth. Therefore, it can lead to microdontia. If the defect is taking place or arresting at the time of histodifferentiation, it will lead to the development of odontogenic cysts and tumors. Wherefore, whereas if the defect is during morphodifferentiation, there will be abnormal morphology of the tooth, which will lead to the formation of odontoid. Also, there can be structural defects such as apposition, calcification and eruption, which will lead to hypocalcified, hypoplastic and embedded teeth. So the development anomaly will take place according to the stage of the defect. So starting with the classification of developmental anomalies, first those which affect the size will include microdontia, macrodontia, rhizomigri, rhizomegaly. Those affecting the number will comprise of anodontia, supernumerary teeth, pre-decidual dentition, post-permanent dentition, those affecting the shape will include germination, fusion, concrescence, talons cusp, dense invaginatus, dense evaginatus, torodontism, dilaceration, supernumerary teeth, enamel pearl, and cervical extension. Those affecting the position can be ectopic position, it can be rotation of the tooth, transpositioning of the tooth, inversion, or transmigration. Then there are categories in which the anomaly affects eruption, such as premature eruption, delayed eruption, impacted tooth, embedded tooth, submerged tooth, and eruption sequestrum. The next category is those which affect the structure. For In the structure of tooth, we have enamel, so it will lead to enamel hypoplasia and mucinosis imperfecta. We have dentine, which will include dentinosis imperfecta, dentine dysplasia. When enamel and dentine both are affected, it will lead to regional odontodysplasia. And if cementum is affected, it will lead to hypocementosis and hypercementosis. So in the upcoming discussions, we'll be discussing in detail about the various developmental anomalies of teeth simultaneously. Okay, so keep on revising this classification of the developmental anomalies of teeth and keep watching the further videos. Thank you.